Dear students, welcome to the next academic session 2021. I am Vibha Katia, your physics teacher. Let us start with first chapter of your book that is electric charges and fields. In this part, we will study about charges which are at rest. Charges are not in motion. So the branch of physics which deals with the charges at rest is called electrostatics. You must have experienced charges when you take out your sweaters and windows. Okay? What are charges? Charges charge is the property of material by virtue of which it can exert force on other objects and can respond to the force. We know there are two types of charges, positive and negative. Same charges repel each other and opposite charges attract each other. Conversion of charge is, if glass rod is rubbed with silk cloth, glass rod will attain positive charge and silk cloth will attain negative charge. In the same way, if ebonite or plastic is rubbed with fur or woolen cloth, ebonite will get negative charge and fur or woolen cloth will attain positive charge. And so many combinations are there. We can go through a list given in some books. Okay? Here we have one simple apparatus called gold leaf electroscope which is used to know whether any object is charged or not. The schematic diagram of this electroscope is like this. Here we have a metallic knob. This is a metal rod and at the second end gold leaves are there. Okay? And this whole system is kept in a glass jar. If we bring any charged object near this metal knob and touch that rod with knob, charges are transferred to this knob through this metal rod. These charges reaches to the gold leaves. Okay? They acquire same charges. And as we know, same charges repel each other. So these two gold leaves diverge. The degree of divergence shows that how much charge was there in the object. Now we come to classification. We can classify material in two different parts. One is conductors and second is insulators. Conductors are those material which can allow electricity to pass through it. Metals, human body and earth are example of conductors. Okay? Insulators are those material which do not allow electricity to pass through it. Insulators, example of insulators uh, generally all non-metals like glass or plastic are insulators. Insulators are also called dielectrics. Dielectrics are those materials if some external electric field is applied on it, uh, they show polarity. We will study about this dielectrics later. Okay. Now, we know that if we want to electrify any object, either we have to add some charge to it or we have to remove some charge from it. How these charges can be added or removed? You know, every material is made up of uh, some particles or molecules and then atoms. And you know atomic structure. Atoms are made up of three elementary particles that is electron, proton and neutron. Electrons are negatively charged, uh, moving around the nucleus in orbits. Protons are confined in that nucleus, neutrons are also there. So, electrons transfer from one place to another. The deficiency of electron gives positivity and excess of electron gives us negativity. So, in solids, electrons are responsible for any object to be positive or to be negative. Okay? Now, come to methods of charging. There are three methods of charging any object. One is conduction, second is induction, third is friction. In conduction, direct contact is there. If we take a metallic sphere having some charge, press Q, and this, uh, another sphere of same size, uh, of same material, which is uncharged, if these two are kept in contact with each other, charges will move from first sphere to second. And 
if we remove these two squares, we will see both will attain half of the charges q by 2 and q by 2. So, this is the method of charging by direct contact or conduction. Second is induction. In induction, there is no contact between two objects. Now, you see, if we bring a metallic rod, uh, any object which is charged actually, a rod near a sphere, metallic sphere which is kept on some insulator. So, if positive, positively charged rod is brought near the, the sphere, all the electrons will be attracted towards this rod, come this side and deficiency of electron gives positivity here. Okay. Now, if we earth this part of the metallic sphere, if earthing is done here, so, all the positive charges move to the earth. As I told you, earth is a conductor and it can, it can have, it can take number of charges. Okay. So, all positive charges move to the earth and if now we remove this positively charged rod, so this negative charge is distributed evenly on this sphere. Okay. So, this is the method in which no contact was there. This is called induction. Third is by friction. If we rub any two materials like this glass rod and silk, ebonite and fur. So, by any ways, the outermost uh, electrons or you can say loosely bound electron transfer from one place to another. And uh, you, you know, we can see some polarity, okay, charge charges positive or negative charges on the objects. So, three methods are there. Next is properties of charges. So, first property is additivity. Additivity of charges says that all the charges on any system is just the algebraic sum of the charges. For example, if Charges plus q, minus 2q, plus 3q, plus 5q is given on any object. Then the sum, the total of the charge will be 7q plus must be there. Okay? The total gives you plus 7q. You see here is one difference between mass and charge. You know, mass is also a property of any object. In this physical world, every particle, every object is having some mass. But mass, but mass is always positive. The charges may be positive or negative. So, algebraic sum of masses will give you positive number. Okay. But here, this algebraic sum with signs may give you positive or negative charge. So, this is additivity. Just algebraic sum of all the charges with sign. Second property is conservation. Conservation of charges says that neither any charge can be created nor be destroyed. Okay? The total charge on an, uh, of an isolated system is always conserved. Isolated system is a system uh, which is not uh, influenced by surrounding. Okay? Uh, example is this, this is called pair production. This gamma photon, gamma ray photon, uh, it is, it gives us one electron and positron. The total charge becomes zero because it has no charge. In case of radioactive decay also, if we take uranium 92 238, it transforms into thorium 9234 by emission of one alpha particle. That is, it is helium nucleus. Okay. So, you see the total charges are same. This is conservation of charges. Third property is quantization. The total charge on any system is integral multiple of a basic charge of electron or you can say proton because both are having same charge. The charge of electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 90 coulomb. In case of proton, it becomes positive. It is positive charge. 
So the total charge is integral multiple of E. Okay. This is unit of charge, Coulomb. Coulomb is a big unit. Uh, in class 10, you have calculated how much electrons are required to get 1 Coulomb of charge. We need 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons to get 1 Coulomb charge. So this 1 Coulomb is very big unit. So we use a smaller units like micro Coulomb. 1 micro Coulomb is equal to 10 to the power minus 6 Coulomb or milli Coulomb. Generally we use micro Coulomb. So these are three properties. Additivity, conservation of charges and quantization of charges. So this is all about basic of charges. Now we will study about forces due to these charges or how they act when some uh, field is applied. Later on we will study about them. Okay. Coulomb's law is complicated in the statement of forces between two point charges. If the distance between two charges is very large in comparison to the size of that charged body, charged objects, these objects can be considered as point charges. So, Coulomb's law states that the force of interaction between two charges is directly proportional to the product of magnitude of those two charges and it is inversely proportional to the square of distance between them. Let us consider we have two point charges Q1 and Q2 kept at some distance R. Then we can write force like F is proportional to magnitude of Q1 into magnitude of Q2 divided by R square. If we remove this sign of proportionality, we have to take one constant. So it becomes F is equal to K Q1 Q2 by R square. Okay. Here this K is called electrostatic force constant. The value of K is, in SI system, the value of K is 9 into 10 power 9 Newton meter square equal to L square. You see? K will be equal to Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Okay. So in SI system, its value is 9 into 10 to the power 9. K is also written as 1 by 4 by epsilon 0. Epsilon 0, epsilon naught. That is the permittivity of free space. Free space means air or vacuum. This term permittivity is a measure of how well a material can store electrical energy. Okay. So, epsilon naught is permitted. So, putting this value in equation number 1, we can write F is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught given to the by R square. Now, we can find the value of this epsilon naught by using these two. Okay. You see, 1 by 4 by epsilon naught is equal to 9 into 10 to power 9. So, from here, we can get the value of epsilon naught. That will be equal to 1 by 4 by into 9 into 10 to power 9, which gives us this much. 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 Coulomb square per meter per meter square and its dimensional formula is m minus 1 l minus 3 t 4 a 2. Every time I tell my students that there will be a question of one mark in a board exam. One mark of maybe related to some uh, dimensional formula related to unit maybe related to some definition. So you must go through definition uh, and uh, this value, dimension, formula, units, etc. Okay? Because force is a vector quantity, so let us see Coulomb's law in vector form. 
let us consider this point charge Q1 is situated at distance R1 from some origin O. Its position vector is R1 with respect to this origin. Okay. And position vector of charge Q2 is R2. Now, if these two are having same polarity, so they will repel each other. Okay. Force on charge Q1 due to charge Q2. F12. Force F12 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R12 square. Okay. So this is force on 1 due to 2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R12 square. And this is direction. This is direction of this vector R12. R12. This is a vector leading from 2 to 1. You see, direction of force is in this direction. We are leading from 2 to 1. So, final minus initial. This is vector in this direction. Okay. And we can show it by this unit vector unit vector R12 and value of unit vector is equal to that vector upon mod of that vector. We have studied this part in class 11. Okay. Vectors. Okay. So, this is vector showing the direction of this force. Getting my point? Okay. So, we can write like 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q1, Q2 by R12 square and this unit vector can be written as vector 1, 2 divided by mod of 1, 2. So, it becomes 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q1, Q2 by R12 Q. You see? R12 Q and this vector R12. You can find this form also. This force can be written in this form. Similarly, if we talk about force on second charge due to first, that F21, its direction will be like this. This. The vector leading to 2 from 1. Okay. So, R21. So, it will become F21 will become 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 pi R21 Q and the vector leading from 1 to 2. Okay. You see magnitude of these two R12 and R21 is same because this is distance between two points, these two separations. Okay, so magnitudes are same. Only directions are opposite. So, if you see these two equations, what we find? We find that F12 is equal to minus F21. Means both the forces are equal and opposite in direction. Okay? So, this is vector form of Coulomb square. Now let us see some characteristics of this force, this electrical force acting between two point charges. First is this force is central. Central force means it is acting along the line joining two charges. Okay. This is conservative force. Conservative force means the work done in moving a charge in any field is independent of path followed by it. It obeys inverse square law. This is square. Okay. It depends upon intervening medium. I told you permittivity. Na? That epsilon naught is permittivity of free space. Here or vacuum. If any medium will be there, so value of force will change. So, it depends upon intervening medium. 
in which medium these two charges are kept. Okay. The force acting between two point charges is unaffected by presence of other charges and it is in accordance with Newton's third law that action force is equal to reaction force. Both are same in magnitude but opposite in direction. Let us discuss relative electrical permittivity, epsilon r. As I told you that force between two charges depends upon intervening medium. If two charges Q1 and Q2 are kept in a medium at a distance r, then force is written as f is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon Q1 Q2 by r is square, where epsilon is permittivity of the medium. We know that if the same charges are kept apart at same distance r in vacuum, or free space, then F naught is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R is square. Now, if we divide equation 2 by equation 1, then F naught by Fn is equal to epsilon by epsilon naught. You see, F naught by Fn will give you epsilon by epsilon naught. This is equal to epsilon R. Relative electrical permittivity. It is all also denoted by capital K. Capital K is called the electric constant. Different mediums have different values. For free space, for vacuum, its value is 1. For air, it is 1.006, uh, I think. For water, it is 81. So, this K has different value for different mediums. Okay. Now, if we put the value of epsilon in equation number 1, what we will get? Fm is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught k. You see, epsilon is equal to epsilon naught k. Q1, Q2 by r square, which is equal to F naught by k. Okay. So, if two charges are kept in any medium with dielectric constant K, then force becomes 1 by K times. Means, force becomes lesser than the force between two charges when they are kept in vacuum. Okay. So, this is about relative electrical permittivity. One more important thing. Uh, using this equation, F naught is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R is square, which we have used initially in Coulomb's law. If we put the value of 1 by 4 by epsilon naught, which was 9 into 10 to the power 9, okay, and if we take Q1 Q2 is equal to 1 Coulomb, 1 Coulomb and R is 1 meter. So, F will be equal to 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton. So, using this formula, we can give the definition of 1 Coulomb charge. I told you sometimes definitions are also asked. Okay, so what is 1 Coulomb charge? If two equal charges are kept at unit distance from each other and if they exert a force of 9 into 10 to the power 9 newton then each charge is called 1 coulomb ok so we can get definition of 1 coulomb charge from this equation ok now come to the next topic that is forces between multiple charges this is also called principle of superposition which is states that total force on any charge is vector sum of all forces taken one at a time. Let us consider a system of three charges Q1, Q2 and Q3. Let the 
position vector of q1 is r1, q2 is r2 and q3 is r3. Now, we want to know the total force acting on q1 due to q2 and q3. So, force on q1 due to q2 will be F12 all are having same polarity. So the direction of F12 is like this. Okay? F12. F12 is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught u1 q2 by r12 square in direction of r12. Okay. Now force on charge q1 due to q3 will be F13. In this direction. Okay. F13 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q3 by R13 square in the direction R13. So total force acting on this Q1 will be F is equal to F12 plus F13. When we talk about force on charge q1 due to q3 we ignore this charge q2 so we take one charge at a time this is principle of superposition we can take n number of charges and can calculate the total force acting on a single charge okay now in this case the resultant can be obtained by resultant uh, can be obtained by using parallelogram law of vector addition okay so now discuss one numerical related to this principle of superposition here is a question three charges of same magnitude and same polarity are situated at the vertices of an equilateral triangle having side L okay Q, Q, Q at three points A, B, C. We have to find force on charge Q, this, which is placed at centroid, centroid of this equilateral triangle. Now, what we do? We draw a perpendicular AB on this base B, C. Okay? Now, because this is a equilateral triangle, you know, this is equal to, this angle is equal to 60 degree. This is perpendicular, so 90 degree. This will be 30 degree. So, in triangle ADB, ADB, this cos 30, this cos 30 is equal to AD upon a B cos 30 is equal to A D upon A B. So A D is equal to means this median. Okay. This perpendicular, which is median also. This A D is equal to A B cos 30. The value of cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So root 3 by 2 L. We know that centroid divides median in 2 is to 1. Okay. This length is 2 third of the total AB. So, AO is equal to 2 third of AD. AO is equal to 2 third of AD. Okay. And what is AD? AD is equal to root 3 by 2 L. So, we will get L by root 3. A O is equal to L by root 3. Is it clear? By symmetry you see B O will be equal to L by root 3 and C O will be also the same. So all A O, B O and C O are L by root 3. The distance between these two charges these two are same. Okay. Now force acting on this charge Q due to charge at A will be F1. That 
direction will be A4. Okay? So F1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q into Q by the square of the distance. And distance is L by root 3. So the square of this will be L square by 3. 3 is here. And direction is along A4. Now, force due to this charge which is located at P is F2 in this direction. In direction B O having same magnitude. You see, F2 is equal to again 1 by 4 pi epsilon of Q Q by L square divided by 3 which is written here. Okay. Along B O same F3 in this direction. C O along C O F3 is also same. You see magnitude of all the forces are equal. Direction is along A O, B O and C O. For convenience let us say right, magnitude is equal to F. Now you see we can find its resultant F2 and F3 using parallelogram law. Okay. So angle between F2 and F3 3 is 120 degree. Isn't it? So its resultant FR is equal to FR square is equal to under root of F square which is equal to F2, F3 both are equal to F. So F square again plus F square plus 2 F into F into cos 120. Do you remember that R square is equal to P square plus Q square plus 2 P Q cos theta? So using that formula, we get this much. This is equal to 2 F square. This is 2 F square. And cos 120 is equal to minus 1 by 2. This cancelled out. Okay. 2 F square minus F square will give you F square. And under root of F square will give you F. So, resultant of F2 and F3 is equal to F, this F. And the direction is along OA. Now, the total force on Q is resultant of this F2 and F3 is FR. And now, sum of F1 and FR will give us total force. So, the total force is equal to F plus F. You see both are same in magnitude but opposite in direction. So F minus F is equal to 0. So net force acting on this charge which is placed at centroid is equal to 0. So this was one example. There are so many numericals related to different topics. I recommend you to go through all the solved examples of NCRT and back exercise. We will see some more questions in next classes. Okay, so see you in next class.